Hey brothers and sisters, this is Elizabeth Marie with Lot of Rain 333. Thank you for returning to hear the things that the Lord has been showing me. I dedicate this video to the Lord Jesus Christ and I do this for His glory. I do have a dream and a dream vision and a message that I just received recently that I would like to share with you. First, I want to mention to those of you who do receive my newsletter that there will be no November newsletter. I will not be getting that out this month, but there will be one in December. All right, so while preparing for this video, I heard in the Spirit something. I heard that there are three groups of people that today's prophets or watchmen address. The first one is the wicked. The second one is the lukewarm church. And the third one is the remnant bride. That's what I heard. It was a download. It was literally one of those Rima downloads I got from the Lord. And I heard that this video is directed to the remnant bride. And so it's not for the lukewarm church. It's not for the wicked. It's for the remnant bride. All right, now let me go ahead and tell you the first dream that I received. I got this on the 18th of November of this year, 2024. And this dream, now hang in there, it's a little bit long, but there's um, a lot of significance in this dream that the Holy Spirit showed me. So wait for the interpretation. The dream started with me being outside. And then somebody called me on the phone, and I don't know who it was, but it was a man's voice, and he told me that a tornado was sighted in my area and that I was to seek shelter. <coughs> Excuse me. When I hung up the phone, I looked up, and sure enough, I saw a massive tornado in the distance, and I saw it moving very quickly towards me. So I, I sought shelter. I ran into a nearby building very quickly. Once inside, I started running into the various rooms, telling people that there was a tornado, a tornado coming and to get downstairs to the basement. Now, this was a very large building, and they, it had a lot of rooms. So I was going in and out of the hallway into the different rooms, uh, calling out to the people, telling them quickly, go and take shelter in the basement. And everyone listened. And everyone that I, I told about the tornado, they quickly ran down the stairs. Uh, then I heard in my spirit that uh, to stop giving out the warning and for myself to go down the stairs as well, to go down now. So in the next scene, I am now in the basement with everybody else. However, this does not look like a basement. It was full of light, and all the walls were painted brilliant white. The ceiling was white, the floor was white, and there were windows all around. So it was not your average basement. I then told everybody to get away from the windows and to go like in some hallways and uh, to grab a pillow and to put over our head to protect ourselves. Once we were on the floor, laying down on the floor, I noticed that there was a window way up high and close to the ceiling. And I looked up and I saw that the tornado was right on top of us. It was hovering literally right on top of us. It was, it was, it was very scary to see that it was right there. And I just braced myself for impact, expecting to feel the raging winds coming or to tear off the roof or, you know, the sh a shaking or something. And I waited for a few minutes and nothing happened. Again, I looked up and I still saw the same tornado twisting right above the window. It had not moved. However, it did not do any damage to the building that we were in. Now, let me give you the quick interpretation. This dream is very similar to one, one that I received a few months ago. However, the interpretation and the message is a bit different. In this dream, I was alerted by a call that warned about the danger coming. This, re this represents the Holy Spirit giving warnings to his watch men and women and prophets for the things that are coming. The large building that I entered was to warn the people and to get out of harm's way represents those 
who hear the warnings. When I went into the building, I talked to the people. I told them quickly to get downstairs and to prepare for what is coming. This represents the remnant church because they listened and they went and took cover. Now the basement represents going underground. In other words, finding places of safety against extreme danger that is coming. This is like an underground church that we have heard of in different countries uh, in history and even today there are underground um, churches that have to hide from their government. Now this basement can also represent safe zones, safe havens, or even hiding under the shadow of his wings, like it says in Psalms 91. The brilliant light or the and the white that I saw in the basement, this represents God's presence and glory that will be in these safe places that the God that the Lord will put us in. So that's why it was so brilliant. That's because God's glory was there. That's because God's presence will be with his people during times of uh, catastrophe and times of trouble. All right, now looking out the window, that represents that there's something coming in the future that we are to prepare for. Because windows in dreams usually signify a prophetic view of coming events. Now the tornado that was hovering right over the building where we were in, it did not do any harm whatsoever. I believe that this tornado represents any kind of trouble that's going to be coming our way in the future, uh, any kind of disasters. The Lord is going to send his holy angels to come and protect even during these times of extreme danger and darkness. So this tornado did not move. It was still outside the building. It was There was still a present danger. But the Lord sent angels to protect us so nothing happened to that building or to his remnant children. It says in Isaiah 26, 20, it says, Come, my people, enter your chambers and shut your doors behind you. Hide yourself, as it were, for a little moment until the indignation is past. And then Psalms 27, 5 says this, For in the day of trouble he will conceal me in his tabernacle. In the secret place of his tent he will hide me. He will lift me up on a rock. And then Psalms 31, 3 says, You for you, talked about to the Lord, you, O oh Lord, you are my rock, my fortress. Therefore, for your name's sake, lead and guide me. All right, let's move on. Let's, I have a very quick, quick dream vision that went right into a message when I woke up. I had this vision right before awakening. And what I saw was a large yard with green lush grass growing. It was a beautiful big yard, maybe a couple of acres at least. Suddenly I started seeing things, something popping up fro up from the ground. I saw these things popping up from the ground through the grass. And when I looked more closely, I noticed that it was potatoes popping up through the ground. Potatoes that were easily being able to be picked up. And when I woke up, I at first, when I woke up, I had no idea what that meant. I thought it was kind of a strange vision, but the Lord immediately gave me a message. And the first thing I heard was this. I heard provision from God, provision from God. And then I heard this message. I heard, I will provide in times of need supernaturally from places that you would not expect. Just like when manna came every day to be collected by the Israelites, so shall it be again. Wait for it. Expect it. Be thankful for when it comes. My people who have been trained to hear my voice shall not be overcome, but shall survive what is coming. For I take care of my own during times of need and famine. Just like in the times of Goshen, there was plenty, so shall it be again. I will mark my people with my name, 
and they will be counted as worthy, worthy to receive my grace, worthy to receive my glory, worthy to receive my provision. Hold on to me during these times that are coming and do not let go. I will get you through even in times that seem grim or even impossible. Have faith and hope and wear them as part of your armor. They have been given by me, so wear them proudly as a son who boasts of his father, so boast of me, my beloveds. That was the end of the message. I want to mention about the boasting part. I had never heard the Lord say that to me before about boasting. And I believe what the Lord showed me is that he is calling his people to, uh, to proclaim and declare his greatness and his wonderful attributes and were to boast in the Lord. His attributes that the Lord showed me are his goodness, his kindness, his love, his long-suffering, and his patience. So that's what the Lord wants us to be doing. I want to end now with these scriptures, and all of this will be in my Substack blog, including the scriptures. So, so go please check it out for free, and please subscribe, and please share with others. Thank you. Uh, Galatians 6.14 says this, For God forbid that I should boast except for in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. 2 Corinthians 9.8 And God is able to make all grace abound to you, that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. Matthew 6.34 Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble.